Today we are going to talk about the dignity of the body, human body. Uh, last uh, in 2015, I talked about manga and philosophy. And in 2016, I talked about what is it, philosophy and its connection to bioethics. And this year, I am going to talk about uh, the Japanese organ transplantation law and the dignity of the human body. And first, I'm going to show you a brief history of uh, brain death and organ transplantation in Japan. Uh, in 1967, uh, the, there occurred the world's first, first heart transplantation from a brain death patient in South Africa. And the next year, 1968, uh, Japan's first heart transplantation from a dubious brain patient was carried out at Sapporo Medical School. Um, but this is a very dubious, I think, illegal <laughs> one. And from the mid 1980s to 1990s, there were, were a lot of debate, a nationwide debate on brains occurred in Japan and more than 200 books were published okay, in this period. And 1997, um, the Japanese organ transplantation law was established. And this law required both a prior written consent of the donor and family consent, both for the, the, the diagnosis of brain death and organ transplantation. So this, is, this was a very strict law which regulate the organ transplantation from a brain dead donors. So um, the patients who didn't have donors were considered alive until the cessation of the heartbeat. And the diagnosis of brain death was prohibited in the case of patients under the age of 15. And in 1999, first heart transplant from a brain dead donor was and carried out under this law. But um, until that year, uh, but after that year, a very, there were a very small number of transplants from brain dead patients. So there was a call for a revision of the law became bigger and bigger. And in 19, uh, I'm sorry, 2009, the Japanese organ transplantation law was revised. And uh, the diagnosis of brain death and organ transplants are allowed if only there is family consent. Mm. Mm. Okay. So uh, the Japanese law became very similar to other countries, but there are still a small number of transplants from brain death donors um, for these 10 or 15 years. There are around 40 cases a year. Very, very small compared with other countries, especially in the United States, there were around 2,500 heart transplants a year. And after that, um, okay, there were some very important facts was found about brains. The first is a long-term brain death. The second is a diagnosis of brain disease fault. And the third is the fact that the brain dead patients can grow, give birth, etc. Okay, I, I'm going to show you um, these three uh, very important factors, but one by one. The first is long term brain death. Um, Alan Schumann published um, the paper Chronic Brain Death in 1998. And he found that there are many there were many cases in which the heartbeat of a brain dead patient continued for more than 30 days. And the longest case is um, this is surprisingly very long, 14.5 years in the state of brain death. You, you see, during these periods, the the heart, heart of the brain dead person continued beating. And in this case, that the patient became graded at the age of four, and he, he, his height grew, and he became an adult graded patient without his brain function. 
Okay, um, the same thing happened in Japan also. This was a case of Hyogo Medical School in 2000. And a boy became braided at the age of 11 months, and his heart continued beating for more than 300 days. And he became taller from 74 centimeters to 82 centimeters, and he grew in a state of bra braids. And in this case, his braids were very, very strictly diagnosed, following the Japanese criteria. And he moved his limbs as if he had been alive. Okay. And the second one is uh, 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 the diagnosis of brain death is full. Uh, it, it is discovered that the diagnosis is wrong because um, the brain death is defined as the cessation of the function of the whole brain. Okay, but it is discovered that even in the cases of strictly diagnosed brain death, hormones and other substances are sometimes created in the brains of brain death patients. And it was um, created and sundered uh, through the blood uh, tube, tubes. And in Hyoko Medical School's case, growth hormone and thyroid blood and causal cell hormone are continued to be created in the boy's brain dead brain. So this shows that the brain of the brain dead boy was still functioning and that the diagnosis of brain death is fundamentally flawed. Okay. And the third one is the fact that the brain dead patients can grow diverse and can do many all that. So uh, it's functional, okay? Um, for example, the, uh, the brain dead patient can maintain their body temperature and then their wounds is healing, is going to be healed, is going to heal themselves. And also, uh, Okay. A braided woman can grow a fetus in her uterus. And also, um, bra a braided boy, a braided girl can be maturated sexually. So um, they, they, the braided boy, a braided girl can can become the period of the child. So they they, they, they do this. They can grow and they become adolescent and they become adult sexually. And also um, we can find, we can observe the growth the growth of the height and the the weight of the body. So that the the the, the way has is going to be uh, where, where, where? Okay, so um, a high cross and weight becomes um, heavier and heavier. So um, this shows that the brain dead uh, patient's body is literally functioning and living and growing. Um, for example, um, this is a BBC. Um, BBC uh, reported last year um, there was a, a, a brain dead woman gave birth to a child. And that mother was brain dead for several months. And it is surprisingly, uh, surprisingly, uh, we can find the Okay, um, the brain dead mother's body can reorganize the network of um, blood tubes inside um, her body to for um, reorganize the, um, her, her um, blood tubes and um, automatically um, su 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 supply much supply much oxygen and blood to uh, to to uh, feed us to to be able to, to be able to uh, grow feed us. Okay, I I I, um, I, I think uh, you you can understand understand what I mean. So um, a brain dead pregnant woman can uh, reorganize the 
that revolve your genes without the function of her brain. So her body, body automatically reorganizes herself, her body itself. itself. So this is amazing uh, phenomenon. And so I think, this is my intuition. Um, of course, brain-dead patients do not have self-consciousness, free will or rationality. Yeah. However, the warm, growing body has a sort of dignity that should not be violated by anyone around the patient. And European philosophy has long considered that only a self-conscious and rational person has dignity. And a human body does not have its own, own dignity. But I argue against it. A human body has its own dignity. This is my intuition. And especially when it is in the process of growing or dying. Process of dying. And I proposed the concept of natural right to grow and die in the form of wholeness in 2009, um, first in French and the next um, in English. Um, this is um, the principle of wholeness I proposed in my paper. First, firstly, a brain-dead child has a natural right to grow in the form of wholeness and die in the form of wholeness. And the child's body should be protected in the form of wholeness from other people's desires to use it, utilize it. And secondly, if a child who has expressed his or her clear intention becomes a brain, the natural right to grow in the form of wholeness has to be overwritten or overridden by his or her wish. So, um, this, so this is my um, idea and my, my proposal. And my point here is this. The human body should be protected from other people's desires, regardless of whether it is alive or dead, and regardless of whether, it, whether or not it is beneficial to helping other people. And so being alive or being dead should not be the most important factor here. The human body should be considered a sort of sanctuary. And only the intention the brain the patient has expressed beforehand can decide the way how the brain the body is to be dealt with. And if there is no prior declaration, the brain the body should be kept as naturally as possible. And of course, the meaning of the word naturally is very hard to clarify. Yeah. And I, in addition, and I propose the principle of wholeness as a natural right. And I would like to add the principle of wholeness to a list of natural rights. That is, um, the natural rights includes rights to life, rights to freedom, and rights to property. Proposed by Hobbes and Locke, which are considered to be given unconditionally to everyone when we are born. And I think uh, the principle of wholeness um, in my sense, is a newly discovered natural right in the age of biomedical technology. And in my opinion, natural rights have to be extended to include the right to grow and die in the form of wholeness in the age of scientific civilization, where peripheral human lives are being threatened by aggressive biomedicine and other advanced technologies. Um, this is what I have learned from the Japanese debate uh, for more than the past 25 years. And per perhaps um, you have a question such as this. A brain-dead child is alive biologically, but isn't, isn't brain-dead child, isn't a brain-dead child dead at the level of human person? But um, 
But what about a healthy newborn baby? A newborn baby does not have a self-consciousness or rationality. Hence, it is not, not a person. Okay, so is a, new, is a newborn baby dead? No, never. So I think we should say that a newborn baby is biologically alive, but it is not a person yet. So the next, you may have a question such as this. Is it wrong to utilize the body of a human being who has lost her self-consciousness and rationality for the benefit of helping other sick people? Hmm. But what about a person with heavy, um, heavy dementia or a person in a vegetative state? Is it, is it okay to utilize them as organ donors? Yes or no? You may say, no, they are biologically alive. Then I reply, a branded child is also biologically alive too. So if we wish to protect people with health, heavy, heavy dementia and people in, in a vegetative state, then you also ought to protect braided children from transplantation. So this is what I want to say. And thirdly, you may have a question in mind, such as, um, is Morioka aiming at prohibiting organ donation from braided children and deserting children? with severe heart or other organ diseases? Um, of course, I do not wish to desert those children. But I believe no one has the right to exploit the wholeness of branded children who maintain a biological integration and the potential power to grow in the state of health. No one can compare the value of life of a growing branded child with that of a sick child with severe heart diseases. And so I'm now thinking that natural right to grow and die in the form of wholeness can be considered to be an example of the dignity of the human body. And the dignity of the human body includes other rights such as the right not to be dealt with as a mere object. Um, in environmental ethics, there are theories that claim that even trees or rocks can have rights. So then, but why not human bodies? This might be an idea that can strengthen the basis of a European image of human beings. Um, French bioethics law states that le corps humain est inviolable. Thus, French law seems to declare that the human body has its own dignity. However, with regard to organ transplant from branded patients, this law is considered to ignore the dignity or inviolability of the human body because an influential law, uh, if there is a uh, family concern, we can uh, transplant the organs from the branded donors. Okay? So I think French biosynthesis law is wrong. Um, okay, so this is the first Japan, J Japanese organ transplantation law, so before amendment. Okay, um, the Japanese organ transplantation law before amendment seems to have supported the idea of the dignity of the human body. This, uh, so the reason is that uh, the first, um, this law stated that the patient who did not have donor cards were considered alive until the cessation of the heartbeat. Um, so th this, is, um, this corresponds to the, my uh, principle of wholeness, uh, such as the natural right to grow in the form of wholeness and die in the form of wholeness. And secondly, um, the first Japanese law required both of prior written consent of the donor and family consent, both for the diagnosis of brain death and organ transplantation. And this corresponds to uh, this, uh, 
the second part of my <coughs> principle of homeless. If a child who has expressed his or her clear intention be becomes brain dead, the natural right to grow in the form of homeless has to be overwritten by his or her wish. Okay. So and it is time to reevaluate uh, this unique Japanese organ transplantation before amendment from the perspective of philosophy of life. And I, I heard um, yesterday's Professor Mavrolo's presentation, and it was very interesting, and also the discussion was very interesting to me. And he um, talked about the relational concept of dignity. And last year in Brussels, I claimed that the concept of person or concept of persona should be considered to be based on human relationships. So um, I think the concept of persona should be relational one. But I don't think that the concept of dignity should also be relational. Mm -hmm. the, the reason is that, um, okay, let, let, let us imagine you know, the, the, this kind of uh, this case. Even if there is no psychologically positive relationships between a braided child and her parents. For example, in the case of domestic violence, there was a very, very heavy domestic violence. But even if in this case, the braided child's body's dignity ought to be protected. So uh, in, in this kind of case, uh, the dignity of the, of the braided child should not be relational. So this is um, I now towards, but I am now today uh, uh, from yesterday to today I am thinking about. And second is the um, okay, answer for centuries. Was this was it an Professor Heisek's question to moral presentation? He um, asked this guy these two questions: Isn't relational concept of dignity answer for centuries? And the second question was, is there a hierarchy of dignity between humans and non-human creatures? And with regard to my concept of dignity of the human body, um, I think my position is, it is perhaps anthropocentric. My idea of um, dignity of the body is anthropocentric. But it is not self-conscious or rationality centric because the human body without them can have dignity. Okay, so I, in this sense, I am against, against Immanuel Kant or Matsuji uh, on this point. And so th this is my uh, very short reaction to uh, the yesterday's very interesting uh, presentation and discussion. Uh, thank you very much. Je vais donner tout de suite la parole euh, donc, euh, à l'Assemblée. Euh, in Japanese or in English, if possible, if not, I'll translate. Je te t'en prie. Deux ans. You can ask the question. Thank you very much for your question. Uh, every year I find your presentation very refreshing and, and uh, innovative. Two short questions. Uh, I'm not going to talk about relational dignity, but both of them have to do with the concept of dignity which you present. So, first question um, concerns the.
brain death or or ordinary death. So this is something that I determined myself beforehand. The self determination. Okay, this is uh, very close, almost identical to some European notions of the human being and what their dignity is based upon. Self determination. In the Senate law, the revised law, um, the self-determination is extended to the family in the case where the dying person has not uh, said beforehand, decided beforehand, which type of death uh, he or she would choose. So this is another form of self-determination. It's a very European conception now it's a very Japanese very Japanese conception. It's not no longer European, if it ever was so. Uh, but my question, the first question is, why, why are we talking about dignity? Why don't we use the word integrity, the integrity of the body? I don't know what the Japanese expression would be, but the word integrity has the connotation of a whole where all the parts fit together and the whole should not be violated. The parts fit together. We should not violate the integrity of the body. Why are we talking about dignity and not integrity? That would be my first question. The second question is short. Uh, many years ago, I had a friend who died of cancer. Before he died, he said he would donate his body to scientific research. Okay, so if I uh, choose to buy it in, in Japan and I choose to have my death defined as brain death, and I say I want my organs to be used for the benefit of others, if I choose that, am I still violating the dignity of my body? That's my second question. Well, okay. Um, second, uh, first, I, I'd like to reply to the second question. Uh, but the second question looks very simple, but not actually it's not so simple because um, hmm. I think, um, of course, in under the Jap current Japanese law, um, you can donate. Uh, um, you can express your uh, intention to uh, use your body, to use your uh, organs for, um, for like, some medical uh, education or research or such things. Um, this is uh, possible. Uh, mm, sometimes it is, it is possible. Yeah. Okay, okay. But um, in this sense, uh, okay, uh, my, my concept of dignity of the body uh, means that my body is protected from the outside desires to exploit my body. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is the point of my of, of the concept of the dignity of the body, of the human body. So, um, but there is a there is only one exception. That exception is when I myself beforehand. Uh, express my uh, wish to uh, violate the dignity of the body. So, um, in this sense, uh, I violate my dignity, but it is a lot. It is a, a, a lot. So, there is a violation. There are opposed there are a violation. Because um, I myself wish to uh, ask, uh, ask someone, ask someone, some physicians to use my organs for research. So um, in, in this process, I ask them to violate the dignity of my body. So violation occurs, but I think this violation is allowed, basically allowed. Okay, but this is the only exception. So uh, this is uh, this is my reaction to your second question. And the, um, concerning your first question, um, 
this is so complicated because, um, okay, um, for example, in the 1980s, the uh, American hmm, physicians uh, defined brain death as the violation of or the violation Destruction. Okay. Um, they define brain as the disruption of, of the integration of the whole body. Mm -hmm. um, and they added to say that this um, destruction occurs when whole brain is destroyed. And so they equated the destruction of the whole brain and the destruction of the integrated whole body. So this is a start, start, starting point of the concept of, concept of um, brain as in 1980s. So um, in a sense, medically speaking, uh, this from the from the angle of uh, medicine, the concept of brain this was first defined as the destruction of integrity of the body. But I think um, the integration you, uh, you mean is not this kind of, this type of integration. You, you mean um, by your you use the word, you mean the integration of not only the integration of, 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 the, one, of the body, but also the integration of the human relationships with surrounding the, the brain the patient. My understanding is correct? Yeah. Yeah? Well, okay. actually, um, that, that's also true, but I was focusing rather simply on the individual using your non relational concept of DVD. Uh, so I will use that. And I still, it is, like you say, very complicated. First of all, is the question, is it possible for me to violate my own dignity as, as the exception, as the single exception uh, to the Japanese law for the same permit? And, and secondly, um, there's something strange about saying when my brain, brain disintegrates, my eye disintegrates, or my whole body disintegrates, that doesn't Sense. You know, so uh, it, it seems to me still that what the law should be talking about, what we should be talking about is the integrity, the integrity of the body, which includes the brain, of course. It includes yeah. the brain. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's not a matter of dignity. Dignity is a matter uh, in the law of self-determination. So I, I don't understand why I'm not clear on why we should invoke the concept of, of dignity instead of integrity of the whole of the whole body. Okay, I think uh, just okay. because we're running out of time, it's gonna be complicated. And I propose you guys continue the conversation maybe later on. Okay. Because otherwise we're not gonna get out of here. Uh, maybe a very short question.
exactly the meaning of this uh, natural uh, right, or if you want natural uh, law, and uh, the, 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 the conclusion. I think that you are using a slippery slope argument in all your presentation about this. You mean that if we uh, confirm what uh, of this uh, <coughs> not respecting uh, dignity, then we will continue. I think that you are uh, using the same argument as uh, Hans Jonas yes, uh, yes, yes, discussing yes, yes. about uh, this, but yes. it's also problematic. So yes. I finish. Okay. Thank okay. you. Okay. So thank you very much again.